trainers, the creators of today, to protectors of tomorrow. Amongst a realm of uncertainty, these are the select that have been tried, tested, and true. Watch, then ask of yourself, do I train or still need to be trained? For as long as I remember, I've been active my whole life. In fact, when I was a baby I actually learned to walk on a ping pong table. Later I actually got involved in martial arts and liked it so much that I basically didn't do any other sports and decided to specialize in it for a long time. Uh, I gained a very good love uh, for movement and for helping other people improve in whatever aspect they choose. And I want to relay that love for movement to my clients and to you. But it's not just my love for this that will make me successful. It's my ability to recognize each individual as just that, an individual. This for me is a lifestyle. I love this. There is no second choice. I will forever be fascinated with the workings of the human body. That's a tough exercise. It requires a lot of strength, a lot of muscle. And as we know, muscle is made of protein. Know what type of protein you need. Trainers, I'd like to understand more about nutrition. You teach us about working out, but when you tell us how to eat with eating carbohydrates and protein, I'd like to understand why to eat that way and how. The first thing you should know about protein is you should have it with every meal. How much protein? If you're a woman, you should have about one palm, so that's one serving. If you're a man, you should have about two palms, two servings, okay? Now, you can find protein in animal sources, or you can find them in plant sources, and both are viable sources of protein, okay? The uh, supplementation is very important if you cannot get it through food. I prefer to get it through food, but if not, go with supplementation. What you look for in a supplement? Look for a quality protein that has high protein, obviously, and low carbohydrates, okay? Either whey or casein is fine. Just remember, at the end of the day, you want to know and be informed about what you're putting into your body. Today we're going to be doing the one-legged deadlift. The one-legged deadlift is fantastic for your quadriceps, the front of your thigh, hamstrings, the back of your thigh, and glutes, your backside. The reason I like it is because it does a fantastic job of toning. So if you've had, uh, you know, no butt syndrome, this will get you that butt that you want. Now, things to keep in mind. One, don't allow the knee to travel forward. Two, you don't want to just bend over like a like one of those birds that drinks water. And three, you want to make sure you exhale on the way up. Okay? All right. So in the one-legged deadlift, key things to keep in mind. One, forget about the knee and think about pushing the hip back. Two. Do push the hip back, so don't just let it stay there and keep your knee uh, keep your knee straight. And three, remember to breathe. Very, very important to remember to breathe because if your body goes down, blood pressure goes up. Okay? Let's check it out. So here's how you do this. Remember, hip goes back, knee stays where it is. Go down until you touch the floor and come up. Very important to come up into the full extension. A lot of people finish here. Don't let that happen. Extend the hips all the way. This will prevent uh, something called anterior hip pain pain on the front side of your hip. So make sure to finish strong. One more time, down, and up, just like that, finish strong. So if you've been paying attention, I'm just going to get Audrey to step in here and show you how it's done. Let's have a look. So have a look at how Audrey does it. 
her knee stays where it is, and the hip gets pushed back. Beautiful. Do you see how she bends over like that? At the same time, she does, as she does it one more time, you'll see that she doesn't just bend over. Her hip does go back and there is a bend at the knee. That's what you want. Perfect, and come up. And if she does it one more time, go ahead, Audrey. Notice this. When she finishes, and she comes up, her hips are fully extended. She doesn't uh, stop short in this position. See, her hips get fully extended as she goes, as she finishes. And that's going to help you have a very good one-legged deadlift. Good job, Audrey. In this variation, we focused on the glutes because the knee was slightly bent. If you want to see what she's going to go through when we do it for the hamstrings and the quads, you gotta come see me. Wait, cut, 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 cut. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So trainers, just because it is that you physically display to measure of your skill, does that mean that you could also verbally relay your knowledge? Let's see what it is you really know. Good afternoon, viewers. I'm Emilia, and welcome to another segment of Now You Know. Abs, abs, abs. If not one of the most discussed, certainly one of the most confusing topics when it comes to training. 36-year-old David asks, even though I probably only work out maybe three times a year, I've always had an eight pack. Unfortunately though, my girlfriend has always struggled to get a ripped pack. She's pretty lean, eats right, and works out about four times a week. It bothers me to see her so frustrated, and I was hoping you can give us some advice. Well, David, let's see what Igor has to say. Igor? Anybody can get defined abdominals. It just depends on how much effort you're willing to put into it. If you're a person who is naturally lean, you can get there in a matter of four to six weeks. But if you've been struggling with weight your whole life, you'll need a much more deliberate and effortful approach. First of all, if you've been dieting for a very long period of time, you'll want to take a two week break from your diet and eat at maintenance calories. You'll also want to lighten up on the exercise. The reason for this break is that during periods of prolonged dieting and intense training, key hormones responsible for regulating your metabolism either decrease or your, or your cells become less responsive to, to them. Two of these hormones are thyroid and leptin. By taking this two week break, it allows these hormones to replenish themselves. After this break, you want to slowly but surely increase your volume of training. Get up to five workouts per week, six workouts per week, even seven, eight, nine, or 10 workouts per week which yes, that means you'll have to exercise twice a day on some days. After each increasing workload, stay at that workload for two weeks, and then after two weeks, evaluate whether you've made progress. If you have made progress, keep doing what you're doing. If you haven't made progress, increase your workload by one workout per week. Although the process is actually much more involved than this and diet is a very big part of the picture as well, this will be a good way for you to get started. Thanks, Igor. Just remember, with whatever informed decision that you make, we are all made uniquely and special. Strive to achieve the best you can with what it is you were blessed with. Focus on the things you can control as opposed to the things you cannot. And now, you know. So at the end of the day, why do I do what I do? I have a vision. I want to create a company full of personal trainers that embrace my vision of having the Rolls Royce of personal training. Basically, what we will be doing is we will individualize by assessment. We will perform musculoskeletal testing on you. We'll perform hormonal balance testing on you in addition to the weight loss. That makes it so much more effective and individualizes the training for you. What musculoskeletal testing does is it's very, very interesting. It's like taking a look two, five, eight, ten years into the future and seeing where you may get injured. The encouraging thing about that is that you can actually do something about that and prevent those injuries. Why do we look at hormonal balance? Here's something that all exercise and diet programs have in common. They all have one assumption and that's hormonal balance. In the absence of hormonal balance, no matter how much you exercise or how little you eat, you will have a very difficult time losing weight. It makes it difficult, if not impossible, to lose weight or gain muscle or attain any other goal. That is why all three factors your musculoskeletal balance, your hormonal balance, and your training and nutrition all must be addressed for you to get the best results possible. And that is why I do what I do.
help you now have more knowledge to better help you reach your fitness goals. I'm Igor. And I train.